Welcome to Home on the Range, the official podcast of 1881 Ranch, bringing you the latest on the products, topics, and techniques for the shooting, hunting, and adventure lifestyles. Here is your host, tactical deployment of small arms expert and 1881 Ranch Director, Will Egbert Jr. Welcome back, everyone, to Home on the Range. This is episode nine. Uh, I'm joined in the studio today by Chris, our event director, who will be discussing uh, with myself the finer details regarding membership to the ranch. I know this is an episode that uh, everyone has been kind of uh, waiting for. We've had tons of questions come in on the website uh, and, you know, through Instagram and Facebook. So he's going to, uh, Chris is going to basically go through a lot of the different questions with me and make sure that I hit all the points and uh, talk about some of the finer details. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'm again, Will, your host. I'm the director at 1881 Ranch, as well as other things. Chris. What's up, guys? How you doing, buddy? Wonderful. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're living in what? A, a, a deeper, a deeper freeze right now with still no snow, which is Good. I don't. I don't want to see any snow this year. I've got. I'm too busy. <laughs> uh, just, just so everybody knows, we got like 180 some questions. I kind of took most of them and put them together. If we didn't answer your question, if it's something that is important, feel free to email us again on it, and we will get back to you on it. If something that was I may have overlooked. There was like there most, was a, there was a ton there. Yeah, most of them were just centered around most of the questions we'll answer today. If there is something that we did forget, it wasn't intentional. Please give us a email or text or yeah. You can always reach out to us at membership at eighteen eighty one ranch dot com and just put on their uh, membership question or uh, whatever your questions concerning. Make sure that we we see that it's a question. Uh, we'll definitely get to it right away. Either Chris or myself will answer that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we took a, we took a fair bit of time and made sure that we condensed everybody's questions. Right. You know, we don't want to sit here and go through all, you know, hundred plus, uh, emails specifically, uh, for at least this topic. Okay. So, uh, I guess let's, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. All right. Let's start with, uh, number one. How about that? What are the main memberships that we'll have available. Okay, so as it sits now, 1881 Ranch has got three different membership classes. When I say three different classes, it's kind of deceiving because there's actually only two. There's membership and then there's corporate membership. So let's let's break this down a little bit. So I'm sure everyone listening right now is kind of aware that the first memberships that are coming available are founding memberships. These are really kind of cool. Uh, members are going to be able to buy their membership in advance from the opening of the club. And for that, they get a bunch of different uh, bonuses, a few extra discounts and things like that. So those are limited in, in, uh, in quantity. So once those are full, then we go into just basic general membership. The general membership has got all of the same things that a founding membership does. It's just uh, a, different, a different price scale. And then, of course, we've got our corporate membership or facility sponsor. That's kind of uh, – that one's set up for people that have got uh, a business and maybe they want to utilize the ranch uh, in that capacity uh, with some of their employees or um, groups, events, things like that. And then, of course, a uh, facility sponsor is set up for everybody that we talked to out in SHOT Show last year, Daniel Defense and Gunworks and Surefire, H and K, those guys are actually able to, you know, come in, sponsor the range, uh, and have their signage and do special events and things like that. So there really is only a, you know, two memberships. You know, general membership, let's say it, and corporate sponsors. Now there is some talk about a, a new class or something like that, but at this time we're just we're concentrating on founding memberships. That's that's our drive right now. Why general membership? Uh, well, a general membership is 
really the it's the it's the base for all the memberships, right? So everything is a family membership. So no matter if it's founding membership or um, general membership, you are everyone under twenty one is allowed on the range in your immediate family. So it's a family membership. If it's just one person, I'm sorry, it's just the way we're we're, we're working it this way for you know wives, um, wives and children, things like that, relatives. Now, as a found or as a founding member, if you have a handgun safety class, my children will be eligible to go to this. Oh yeah, definitely. Wives, they've all got the same access level as the primary person. Yes. So, briefly, let's let's break down the primary and the primary membership holder. The only difference uh, is going to be whether or not they've gone through a 1881 ranch safety class. So let's say, for instance, um, a member comes in, purchases his founding membership. He's the primary. His wife and children will be all secondaries. So they have to be escorted on the range by the primary member. Now, if his wife would like to use the membership by herself, it's no extra fee. She would just have to go through a you know, she'd have to go through the safety training course and that way she gets her own ID and she can use the the facilities whenever she wants to without her husband as an escort. So think of it as the primary membership holder always has to be the escort unless you've gone through the safety training. So if my wife got a membership to the range. Well, she's got her membership through you. She would have it through me. But right. say, if she, say somebody's wife is a shooter and okay. they're – other isn't, they would have to be checked out if they wanted to have access to mm -hmm. a three-gun competition or something like that. They would have to go through a safety course. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's how we're running it. Now, it handles the immediate family under 21. Once you get 21, you've got to, kind of, you've got to get your own membership. Now, if you're, a, if you're a child coming in with founding membership, we're going to have a supporting member, basically a membership there inside of that so that you can come in with your family at the same time. So we will allow that. So you'll have the same benefits as your, as your mom and dad. So when you turn 21, you're allowed a founding membership as well. All right. What if I want to bring my father-in-law? How does that work? Uh, father-in-law that would have to go under a guest pass because it's not your immediate family. Okay. So, um, why don't we go over a couple I think there was some questions there about what if what is included in the founding membership, right? Yes, what is included? Okay, so uh, I'm just going to go right down the website. So if you guys want to open the website up and and reference this, um, I'm just going to go down the list. Uh, is there going to be a charge for guest pass as well? Uh, I'll get to that here. That's right. right down here a little bit. So uh, founding membership, it's a one-time fee for per year. And that includes your immediate family members under 21. Your membership is guaranteed. It's also refundable. So if any time the project doesn't continue to go forward, we can give all the members back their money. So it's uh, their membership money. So that's, that's kind of nice. Um, membership starts when the facility opens in 2020. Before that, founding members are allowed to come out on the property and do some of the special events uh, and shoots and things like that that we're going to be doing through construction. So that's fun. You're going to have access to pre-opening events um, and all the different things as we're going through uh, construction of that. Uh, none of uh, All the memberships, let me say this right now, all the memberships have no work hours required. So this is not a club where you come and you've got to put in 10 hours of you know range time uh, or 10 hours of work time on the range and that type of thing. I, I don't believe in that. I think if you're getting charged, you know, uh, some of the other clubs they charge and then they charge you for your work hours if you don't do them and the range still looks like crap well what's the point they're burning the money someplace and they're not keeping the range up so why not just you know call it a day put it inside the membership and handle it ourselves that way we've got a clean environment all the time um, so the founding memberships get eight individual guest passes per year now those are given to you so you can bring anyone you want for free they're free guest passes they do expire at the end of the year. So you can't like stockpile them up and bring out 50 of your buddies, anything like that. So 
their specific bands that are cut for that for that year. Is there a limit as far as how many people you can bring per day? Uh, no. No. So if you want to bring in more people, you would have to go in through, let's say you want to burn all eight guest passes. Remember, in your documents that you're going to sign, you are you're responsible for those yeah. people. So it, it's your membership on the line. It's uh, you know. So if you think you can handle all eight people, go re- go for it. Uh, we'll have range officers out there. So if you need a hand or whatever, just flag flag a couple of them down and, and handle it that way. Let's say you wanted to bring in, you know, ten people outside of your eight guests. No problem. That file under special events, and you just coordinate that with us. And each one is going to pay a, a day rate, and they have to go through their their brief safety uh, protocol, and that's that. So if you'd like additional guest passes, you can get those every year. I think they're going to be right around $20, $25. So you can buy more of those. Uh, a really cool thing that comes with your founding membership is unlimited staff instructor courses. So all of the different pistol, rifle, carbine, shotgun, off-road driving, survival classes, everything that's taught by a staff instructor at 1881 is free to you. All you have to do is sign up. Now, there's a caveat to that. You can't just sign up and not show up because you're taking a slot, right? Right. So you've got to kind of, you know, like, oh, (laughs) uh, turns out I'm not going to be able to make it. We've got to open up that slot for another member right away. Um, You, of course, got you have access to all of the general firearms ranges, access to the dedicated steel range, uh, access to the precision rifle range, which requires prior certification, right? You just can't go out there and start trying to ring steel at 800 yards it's 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 unsafe so you'll have to go through and you'll have to get an endorsement which is free i mean you just kind of sign up for the class go through the endorsement we check you out make sure you know what you're doing and you're good to go uh, then you've got access of course to the to the clubhouse locker rooms patio areas uh, meeting rooms you'll have to schedule those uh in prior then you've got access to the engineered terrain park um, you also get some advanced notification especially on like guest instructors, special events, things like that. So if we're bringing out, let's say, Pat McNamara, as a founding member, you're given advance notice that that class is coming. So you don't get like a general email from, from, um, you know, from the club. You're going to get your founding membership update. Hey, look, Pat McNamara is coming in on this date. We've got these slated for founding members. Fill it up. If it doesn't fill up, we'll leave it over to general membership. But you've got, you're going to have a very small window to to sign up. Um, what do you think? In like two weeks or so? And yeah, probably more like a, a week, ten days, something like that. And we're going to give you some advance notification that like, we're going to be scheduling. You know, the first part of the you know second quarter. We're going to have these things all up on the website now, so you're going to kind of know that Pat McNamara is coming out. Let's say. Mid June, mid June, something like that. So you can kind of put it on your radar, so to speak. But you're going to get the actual date before everyone else, so that you you're it's just kind of a perk. You know, will you be able to use it all the time? Probably not. But I think it's something nice to give to give to the founding members right away. Um, let's see, advance notice on special events, right? So you get discounts on uh, your annual safe rental. So if you'd like to rent a safe, and you know these prices are going to be coming online in the next you know couple weeks. Uh, January, so to speak, we've been pushed back a little bit here and there. So, plus it's Christmas time, so we <laughs> we do have lives. We, we do have lives, <laughs> a little bit of one at least, <laughs> something that resembles. <laughs> so you get, uh, you know, there's a discount on your annual safe rental. Uh, there's also a discount on firearms, uh, custom coatings and gunsmithing, uh, special order firearms. Uh, special classes and things like that. So these are discounts as well as ATV and UTV storage. So when that portion of the ranch opens up, you're going to be able to have a small discount there too. Uh, and then with your founding membership, along with you know your regular membership, you're going to get your founding member ID card, your lanyard, an armband, uh, a nice embroidered hat. We've got a membership coin, a vehicle sticker, a bunch of stickers, a patch, and then another special gift for the founding members. Uh, regular members or general memberships are going to have the same thing outside of the special gift. So you, you're kind of getting a little a little bump there too. So does that, that it was kind of like a mouthful there. Yeah. Uh, for the companies that are involved in the industry, 
what can they expect with the corporate membership? Corporate memberships are going to be basically tiered so that smaller companies can still be, uh, can still utilize the facility as well. Relevant. Yeah, exactly. So somebody like, you know, Vulture Equipment Works was a small company, right? Uh, we can't handle what Remington can handle. And honestly, we'd only have, you know, what, six, six different employees using the range at any given minute. So it's like, you know, we'll have a smaller membership available. So it's tiered. Um, brand signage, corporate signage, uh, if needed, access to private ranges for designated amounts of time for year. So unlike some ranges that close member ranges down, we'll actually have a corporate range set off to the side. So if they want to do a special event, they're not impeding any of the range uses by our, our members. Oh, so you won't close the actual range down for that special event? No. No, that's gonna have, they're going to have their own range off to the side, so we don't have to worry about that. So if you drive two hours to come out to the range, you don't get there and they've got the whole place shut down. You got to go home for the day. Oh. <laughs> not that that's ever happened to me, but I mean, I know yeah, it's happened no, to a few people. <laughs> not to say that it's ever happened to me no, either, right? No, 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 no. You drive out there an hour and a half in traffic. You've spent another half hour, 40 minutes loading up the truck, schlupping the stuff up out of your basement and so on and so forth. You get out there and you're like, oh, yeah, well, you can go play on the pistol range over there with, you yeah. know. You can go to the pistol pals with the 22s have fun yeah exactly but all the other stuff that you trenched out here and the scope you yeah. need to get no I'm, I'm not doing that i'm, no. I'm not going to allow that kind of that you know that that's shenanigans I don't, I don't believe in that um so we've got uh you know private events that they're going to be able to do as well and then uh for larger events 1881 staff can be uh set up on site so they can actually have a dedicated amount of staff there from 1881 to make sure that their event is going well, um, you know, shuttling people back and forth, bringing out extra ammo, whatever they're doing, right? Picking up from hotels or any of that kind of stuff. Yes, we that's, can prearrange and stage all that. Exactly. So shuttle service is part of their uh, part of their program as well, and uh, secure equipment and firearm storage, which is kind of nice. So inside of the ranch is going to be a pro shop. That'll probably be run by Vulture Equipment Works. So well, that'll be a separate entity all by itself, and that will have its own safes. So as far as A&D is concerned and the FFL is concerned, no worries. If you're a firearms manufacturer, uh, you can send in your firearms. We'll take charge of them, log them into the book, put them in safe storage, and they're there ready for you when you come in off the plane. And since we'll have an FFL on site, should somebody be coming cross-country, they don't want to fly with their firearms, they can ship them to the FFL yep. and pick them up from there. Yep, and use them, and then the FFL will send them back to, you know, uh, the proper. an FFL of their choice. So it's it's pretty it's pretty simple. It's a little bit more paperwork, but I think it's a little more safety, safety maybe peace of mind, especially if you're talking about a manufacturer. They think nothing of, you know, sending that stuff back and forth. It's all insured and, and tracked overnight, so it's not a, not a yeah. big deal. And we will have firearms for rent for classes. Oh, definitely as well. Oh yeah, definitely. There's going to be a whole bunch of neat stuff. Of course, I'm going to put a bunch of my stuff out there as well. So if, <laughs> there'll be a, a, a wicked selection of of oddities and abnormalities, so they speak. Um, let's see what else. What else we got on there? We got the companies. We got the corporations. Um, How will people know that the founding memberships are live? Ah, uh, that's a that's a big one. So everyone keeps asking because they see the founding memberships sold out. So relax, everyone. The founding memberships that are on the website are just sitting there as placeholders. They say sold out so that no one can go in there and click and put one in the basket, so to speak. Um, there, everyone that is signed up on the email right now to be notified or to get more information on the founding membership is already put in a queue. Okay, they're going to get an email. As soon as we're ready to start uh, to start accepting memberships, those founding members or those people that have you know signed up in advance are going to get a notification in their email. You've got two weeks, three weeks. Get your money in, and this is a pri it's a private link. So you go there. It's not it's not going to be published on the general website, and you're in there. You go fill out your membership form. Boom, you submit your money, bang, all done. Is You're it secure? In. Of course. 
got to ask. <laughs> that did that did come up. I mean, we're using all the latest SSL encryptions and all the other things. You know, so your credit card number is not saved or anything like that. It's um, so that's that's pretty simple. Is there a fee for credit cards? Nope. Okay. Nope, not at all. So we can pay by either check or credit card. Yeah, yeah. Members can pay by check, credit card, Cougaran. No. <laughs> How about PayPal? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That is com- that's come up quite a bit. Um, did you see any of those uh, on the PayPal side? Uh, 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 th- most people realize PayPal is about as anti-gun as things get. It, it really is. I mean, we can hide the membership and what, what you're buying, but at the end of the at the end of the time, it, it's more added paperwork for us, and we're dealing with PayPal. And if PayPal does find out what you're doing with it. They could stall the transaction, and then you're sitting without, and I'm sitting without, or the club is sitting without. So we've kind of said no to the PayPal thing. Yeah. Uh, I understand there is no monthly payment options. No, not at all. It's a logistics nightmare for me. I don't want any part of it. The club doesn't want any part of it. The members don't want any part of it. The, the investors don't want any part of it. It's pretty simple. You pay at the beginning of the year however you can. And you've got your membership. But I can charge it for the year. Yeah, you can charge it on your credit card. All right. Most definitely. Yeah. But we're not allowing any uh, monthly installments or anything like that. Pay as you go. Yeah. What happens then is we've got three different systems that are uh, three different electronic control systems that are working at any given minute inside the ranch. And we're trying to keep everything as streamlined because, remember, it's not public. If it was public, we could put in a, a much more robust system and have more employees and things like that. But this is a private facility. So we're kind of like you pay your money in the first couple of weeks of January, your your membership is live. It gives us at least, you know, 30 days to clean out anyone that's not there, purge the system. Because we're like you said, we've got lives. I mean, this is this is your club. This is not my club. This is the members club. Right. So you kind of have to have a give and take with some of the stuff. What amenities are going to be included? Oh, with your membership, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, pretty simple. Um, you, of course, you've got access to the clubhouse. So initial thoughts, it's going to be right around 5,000 square feet. So inside that, there will be a pro shop that you have access to. You've got a kitchen area where you can get something to drink and some snacks and things like that. Uh, we're still working on some details about how that's going to be left open for the members and like what's available and and things like that so uh but there is a kitchen area and then of course your locker rooms so there's a male and female locker rooms with bathrooms Uh, that's also going to have external access from the outside so you don't have to come through the club so when the club is closed at night let's say in your and we're doing a special event or let's uh let's say we're uh, you're out in the teepees you're out camping or doing something else in one of the teeny houses and you want to use the bathroom, you can still come up to the side entrance of the club, hit your key card, come in and use the bathrooms. So you're not relegated to, you know, peeing in the woods and in the middle of the night that while it's fun and everything, I guess everybody likes to, you know, (laughs) not all of us want to sleep outside. (laughs) Well, we'll have, we'll have access to that. And then you'll have access to all of the different meeting rooms and, um, you know, of course, the the guest lounge and things like that. So that's that's the clubhouse. Uh, so you'll have running water, which is nice because most clubs don't running water. Yep. You'll have heat and air conditioning in the summertime. Is that correct? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a it, it's going to be just like a country club. Yep. So when you come into the clubhouse area, there's a big fireplace for in the winter time. We'll have you know the fire rolling. You can sit by the fire and warm up. Do whatever you want there. You can go outside on the patios. There'll be a couple spots where there'll be heaters involved. So you can sit out there in the summertime, I mean the fall time, and, you know, have a cigar or whatever, sit outside. Maybe do a whiskey tasting. Well, that, that's that's definitely that's on the thought. that's definitely on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I think that list that, I think that list that you and I put together is, is growing exponentially. I, I, I can't even imagine what's on there now, how many different things. And we're gonna be some pretty busy dudes. Um, so you've got access to the pro shop, you've got access to the clubhouse, you've got access to the bathrooms, uh, and locker rooms and things like that. You're going to have access to, uh, the safe room. If you purchase, if you purchase a safe for the year, you've got access to the safe room and you've got access to a spot to clean some firearms. 
if they come out for a class, say somebody comes out for a three day shooting event or whatever, mm-hmm. we will have storage for them on site. That's a good question. I think that would be something that we should have because if somebody comes in from Oklahoma yeah. or whatever, they may want to go and I'm just thinking do a night in the uh, town or something. Yeah, I'm just thinking. Um, Most guys, I'm just thinking safety for the local hotel. Right. So two miles up the street, we've got that nice uh, Fairfield Inn Marriott, and there's been horror stories from gun sight and wherever all over the. Not, I'm not talking about gun sight, right. but you know, like people go to shooting schools and somebody's sitting there and they're practicing in their room, and the next thing you know, pow! There's a round in the in the hotel room. Um, so maybe we'll. That that's a good that's a good thing. So let me let me I circle think. back on that because that gets into a little bit of an ATF nightmare because you have to give them access to a safe that's outside of the FFL. Well, the other thing is, if you did have storage for them, they could leave their stuff there so they could not worry about it sitting in a car. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sitting in their hotel room. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll put that up on the I'll put that on the board. That's like, a good. That's a good question. Because most of us, when we go places to go shooting, and that you know, what do you want to do afterwards? Stuff in the car. Yeah, I mean, you want to go out for something to eat. Let's say stuff you're sitting s- by the window. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just it, it's. A, oh, I think gun owners get a little paranoid. Maybe a whole lot of paranoid. We didn't even bring our guns to NRA this year. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We didn't. We didn't. I mean, you could. We could have easily walked around with a strap, you know, cock blocked yeah. and ready to rock, baby. We didn't. Just because I didn't want to leave it in the room, I didn't want to leave it in the car. What happens if we went out? We went right. to the, you know, the ball or what? No, I didn't. I didn't feel it was necessary. There's so many people at NRA with guns. Yeah. I think it was probably the safest place to be at that particular moment. That or next to the president. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have been cool on, to be next on to Air the Force president. One. Yeah, on Air Force One. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got access to the clubhouse. Then you've got access to uh, the shooting ranges. So the shooting ranges are kind of cool. There's going to be multiples of those things all set up from, you know, 15 yarders to 300 yard uh, rifle range, lots of different, uh, nothing set yet because we're still trying to maneuver these things in. I'm trying to cram as many private ranges in there as possible. So when somebody comes to the, the ranch, there's going to be a fair amount of private style ranges that only are built for four to six people. Something like that. So if you're on the range with you and your wife, you can take one of the smaller bays, and you don't have to worry about four or five other people being with you. So we're trying to get as many of those in there as possible, still being, you know, and not taking up too much of the extra room. So we can still do our 360-degree range. We can still do the dedicated steel ranges. Uh, we want to put a, uh, a specific 22 range just for 22s for the, for the kids. I think that's really fun. And then, of course, you know, the women's only range. Uh, that's really cool for the female members. Um, it, we're, we're basically running it like, you know, look, it's a female range only. There's no dudes allowed on it. I catch you on it, you're going to get reprimanded. And that just that makes it no fun. Look, that's there for the women so they don't feel pressured or they're not standing next to one of us with our shorty barrel ARs and we're just pounding away full auto. And it, it, it's not it's not enjoyable. You know, so there's a quieter spot for them to go work on their defensive tactics or, or whatever with a female instructor. Then what you've about, got, well, you've got access to the, the amenities are the, the, what, the uh, engineered terrain park, the fish pond. Uh, now how will that work with the terrain park? It's open. Just go in, sign in so that we know you're out there. And that's it. Come back when you're done, sign out. And what can we use on the terrain park? Uh, anything outside of a three-wheeler. I'm not allowing three-wheelers. I don't think oh. anyone has those things anymore. But uh, if you're going to use a motorcycle, a dirt bike, it has to be road legal. Right? It has to have plates. It has to have a, a I'm going to call it a muzzle device, if you will, an exhaust, a real exhaust. You can't be out there with a two-stroke, you know, 500cc, you know, rah, rah. Yeah, I don't want any of it. <laughs> it's not what it's there for. But you want to bring your BMW adventure bike or your KTM or Honda twin or what? That's perfectly that's perfectly fine. So uh, ATVs, no problem. UTVs, have at it. Uh, your Land Rover, your Jeep, your Tacoma, Forerunner, what, whatever. So, uh, street vehicles, go for it. And that's the entire that's the entire run. I mean, so the engineered terrain park and any of the outside perimeter trails, it's all open. 
What about archery? Oh yeah, yeah. We'll have ac- you'll have access to that as well. There's a 2D and then a 3D coming in. A 3D range, I think, will probably come in in 2021. We're going to start cutting those trails um, this year. Or coming, you know, 2020. We're going to start cutting those trails. But I want to, I want to have enough time where I can meet with Hoyt and Matthews and the archery uh, council and actually build it so we can have some events. And so there's a few different obstacles that we want to put in the woods. Uh, big metal structures and that, so you have to climb up a set of stairs, and you'll actually be shooting from thirty feet in the air, simulating a tree stand, that type, of, that type of thing. And I don't want to rush that, and that that one's not my forte. So I want to be able to have enough time to bring people in that's that specialize in that. What about five stand? Of course, this one's going to be really cool. I hear um, there's not too many of these out there right now. We're planning on an elevated five stand, and I'm not giving away any trade secrets right now, but coming from my level of shooting and my background in designing training classes for military, state, things like that, I'm going to tweak it a little bit. (laughs) So you're going to have a a, a general five stand run, but then if you want to turn up the juice and you want to get ready for bird season and you want to do it the right way and you want to really stress yourself, I don't want to stress yourself, but you want to stress out your, your practicality on, on positioning and engaging different types of flyers, I'm going to have that availability there. And it's going to be baked right in from the get-go. So that's going to be fun. Will it be lighted for night events? We will probably put lights up there, not for the first few years. All right. Does anybody walk around with which uh flashlights for you when you're shooting it, you know, shooting in the evening? I don't even know. Does anybody really shoot in the evening? I've only bird yes. shot during the day. Yes. I've, uh, I've only done it during the morning. Yes. You know, by by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I've got a, what do they call it? I've got the shoulders knocked off a bottle of scotch. No. So. We'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> we can talk about that later. What about charity events? Of course. Uh, one, of the main, one of the main focuses of 1881 Ranch is philanthropic, um, you know, organizations and and drives. So there are a couple, you and I have got a whole series of these things, but uh, celebrity shoots and special shoots and, and things like that are all going to be available to you as well. Oh, those are all the questions that I have. Does that really, does that cover what else we got? Well, that's it. Oh, well, the, the fishing pond thing. I mean, not too many people are are too interested in it. At least the questions are always about the guns and things like that. So right. I, the fishing pond is going to be pretty cool. It's four or five acres, and I think we're going down about 12 feet. So it's going to be a big freaking hole. Um, we're going to try and make it scuba friendly. So if you wanted to do uh, test out some of your gear or something like that, or we can do some classes for swift water rescue uh, for people in the county or people in the state, um, we'll, we'll bury some really cool stuff out there. We're, that's to be seen. Like we, we, we don't know if we can keep the pond that that clear where you can actually see 10 feet. Uh, if we can get eight foot, ten foot visibility out of that thing, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely go down that road. But you're going to be able to kayak fish from it, and I'm going to manicure the outside edges. We probably we won't be able to hold trout in there. Uh, if we do, the trout will be at the bottom most of the year, and they'll come up during the fall, and that's that. But um, it's going to be hard to keep the bass from eating the trout, uh, so that's going to run into it. So I think we're going to keep that as a bass and uh, panfish pond. Uh, if you've never fly fished for bass, you know, it's, it's a hoot. I mean, it's a hoot. You get a smaller rod, smaller, uh, uh, a lighter weight and you think it's just connected to your wrist and that bass is just, you know, it's typically a softer rod than a normal conventional reel rod and reel. So that's fun. So that'll be manicured and kind of shaped so that you can do some long casts for fly fishing. Uh, a few of our members have brought that up right away and they were very interested in having some place where they can they can fly fish, practice or fly casting, and stuff like that, and do classes as well. Yeah, somebody teaching us how to uh, tie flies and all that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Those will be seasonal classes. I think we'll start those probably right after Christmas. It's kind of one of those things that you're going to do. In the dead of winter. In the dead of winter, right, when you don't really want to go out in the fr- range and, you know, freeze your, yeah. uh, freeze your what's off. So what else is in there? Anything else? We've, got all, we've gone over the pond. We've gone over the uh, the terrain park. Uh, ranges, ranges, seen. the clubhouse. Um, uh, we've gotten a couple questions on hunting. There is no hunting on the property. I'm sorry. This is you know that's just the 
that's a nightmare trying to balance that and with this it's only going to be 400 acres so <laughs> only uh but there will be farming operations on the property as well so you kind of have to you know there's there's a give and take there so there's no hunting on that property but there's 10,000 acres right down the street um do you want to take a second and, and talk about all the different amenities in the area i mean no one's asked about that but it's pretty I mean, it's pretty important to you know what you've got access to well, I think we can sum it up in uh, two words: Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that I don't. I don't know. Maybe in twenty twenty, I think that Starbucks is supposed to be there on exit two twenty, right there by us. I hope so. Yeah, that'd be nice. If not, there's still really nice coffee at the at the uh, cafe at the uh, Fair Oaks Dairy. Or we just because they serve Starbucks inside the cafe anyway. Yeah. So I mean. While the Starbucks sign isn't on the window, it's still Starbucks coffee over there. So, um, or we could do Black Rifle or something. I'm sure we could find. Yeah, there's there's tons. Well, we in could. the next couple of years, we'll have our our coffee getting you know roasted there on premise. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so you're what two minutes away from Fair Oaks Dairy? I mean that 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 is an absolute wicked compound. <laughs> yeah, campus. Let's call it campus. The compound is that yeah. sounds a little weird. Campus. But there, it, it, it's not like you're going out there and getting cow poop on your boots. It, this is this is very much like Disney. When you walk in, there's tons of different activities for the kids, learning environments, interactive displays, things like that. My kids just did the uh, uh, the high ropes course. Really, they were thirty feet in the air, dude, walking on steel beams that the size of a two by four. And, you know, they're suspended in these big, huge harnesses, you know, and then they got a top tether on top, but they're walking on these like ropes. There's a rope hanging there, just, just suspended over the thing. And they're 30 feet and they're hanging over and you're walking and everything. And they were petrified the first, you know, two seconds to go on the first level. And then once you get past that 12 foot, then you get up to like the eight, you know, the, uh, the 25 foot area where, oh my, I was like, I'm dying as a kid inside. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but dad had to stay on the ground and take photos and videos. Uh, so you've got access to the entire dairy. It's two minutes away. Fifteen minutes away from the ranch is ten thousand square, uh, ten thousand uh, was it ten thousand acres of uh, of hunting at Willow Slough. So if you want to do some and some really nice hunting up there too, as well as Willow Slough has got a big fishing area. Um, and then you've got oh the creek. Oh the creek runs right through our property, so you're actually able to get into a kayak. Uh, a small river kayak, um, and float that all the way down for smallmouth. What else is in there? I've been told um, it's smallmouth, uh, northern pike, and some other stuff is in there. Hmm. And uh, that floats right down to the Iroquois River. You can actually jump in the Iroquois River there and then float that all the way back into Illinois. And there's some massive fish in there. And then just pick up the phone and Tell us where you're at, and we'll have pre-designated spots to come out, and we'll just go grab you. We'll grab the trailer and the truck, and whoosh, we'll zip out there, and we'll grab you there. So, And then you've got Rensselaer in town, so you're only 10 minutes, 15 minutes away from Rensselaer. Um, you're only an hour and 20, hour and 30 out of Indy. Of course, you're an hour and 15, hour and 20 out of downtown Chicago. Um, we've got lots of You're only 30 minutes out of Maryville, Cherville, and Valpo. So, I mean, you want to talk about food options. Um, so on your way back or anything like that. Plus, we've got uh, a deal we're working with uh, the Fair Oaks Dairy for catering our, our big events and things like that. So um, we got a hotel right there at the dairy. Uh, it's just gas. So there's gas, coffee, food, yeah. several different types of food options right there at the dairy. You've got the housing, which is brand new. And then you've got our, our stuff. And then you're 15 minutes away from Rensselaer um, and – you know, half hour away from Valpo. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So if like your significant other wanted to go shopping or something, you could hypothetically get dropped off at the range. They would have access to shopping 20 minutes from there. Yeah. Half an hour. I yeah. Mean, it's 20 not, minutes, half hour. No problem. Yeah. yeah. They could go do their thing, come back, pick you up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Definitely. Or you could dump them off, go to the range. And then when you get ready to leave, go pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> they might want to just hang out at the dairy and eat one of the, you know, the ice cream. Oh, the ice cream. Oh, oh yes. Oh. <laughs> I told you it was oh. the best ice cream in the world. Yes. 
Like you should see the kids when they get their like double scoop. Oh, I want strawberry and chocolate, and then they get it, and it's just all over them. I mean, it's compl- They devour that. They just attack it. It's it, it it's, is the best ice cream it, in the world, bar it, none. It is good. It is good, isn't it? They got awesome desserts there too. So, what else we got? Anything else? We got the clubhouse, charity events. We got all that. The five stand. I'm really looking forward to that five stand. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, I've talked to a couple of people about the details, and their eyeballs just get like huge, and they're like, "What? How can you do that?" Ah, ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> uh, well, that dated me, right? Yeah. Ancient Chinese secret. What was that commercial? Uh, Wasn't that for a, like a dry cl- uh, cleaning solution or something? So, founding memberships. We did that. All the companies involved. Yeah. What else do we have? Is there, is there anything sitting over here? Well, you're listening to the podcast, so you've got that. Uh, other products. I mean, we're going to have a whole bunch of different products in the pro shop that are 1881 branded stuff, too. Uh, the club, all of our different events and amenities, uh, special events, guest celebrities, trainers. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, isn't that's it? it? Well, I, I think if you guys have got any other questions, you know, hit up, um, hit us up at membership at 1881ranch.com and leave us a thing, uh, leave us a message for Chris or myself. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to you guys and, and put it on the list. And if you've got any ideas that you'd like to see implemented at the range, uh, different events or anything like that, please make sure to tell us. That's the only way we can start planning these things out. Um, they usually take about a year to a year and a half to start um, planning any special events or special shoots and things like that. So, um, Especially if we're talking about you know bringing in a guest instructor or, or any of that, there's already a few people in line for the guest instructors that we're looking at mm-hmm. uh, special events. We've got a list of things. I can safely tell you that with the amount of interest that we have, get involved early because when this fills up, it's not like we're going to reopen up membership or you know start taking on people everybody knows what it's like to go to a gun range and you're a member or you're say you're a guest and there's a lot of ranges out in this area out here where they've got a waiting list that is five years long but, yeah we should probably touch on that because we haven't gotten any questions about it but that is probably a, a very once we top out membership and we're not going to release the exact amount because it, it's still kind of set it for the first year or two. We've got a total number, and we're going to try and stage that over the next couple of years so that you know we, we kind of ease everybody into the range, and the range can work out its bugs and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, we're I would I would urge everybody to get their stuff in it, early you know, early and take advantage of that founding membership because when that thing closes, that's it. There are no founding memberships going to be allowed back in. So let's say, well, this was one question that we didn't hit. I don't think we put it on the list though because there was only two of them. Um, so if somebody l- lets their membership lapse, if you let your founding membership lapse, you're going to be given a little grace period, and then that's it. It's over with. You've got to go back into general membership. And if there is a wait period, you know, if there is a waiting line in general membership. I'm sorry you go to the back of the line. Uh, we have to be able to maintain that. So the founding membership is just something that we're offering right now, and we're not going to – we won't do that again. We'll offer general membership spots you know, throughout the year. Uh, hey, we've got two more slots that just opened up. And take two people in from the waiting list if there is one, that type of thing. But remember, this is a private club. It's uh, limited in nature. Um, so don't, don't dilly-dally with that, I guess. Yeah, we've we've seen a lot of the clubs just out here where you can't get in. Yeah, I've kept one membership alive to a to an outdoor range local here, and it takes me the same thing, guys. It takes me an hour and a half to get there from where I live, and I'm no I'm not in the boonies or anything, but and I keep my membership active just right. because that wait list is uh, I want to say like five hundred or. 500 members or five years. I can't remember what it was, but it's silly. Like, I'm like, what the hell? But, you know, uh, to get a range moving, to get an outdoor range approved, to get it built, it's a huge project. 
it's an it's a massive undertaking. So don't think that I just snap my fingers and everything is off and running, guys. So it, it's taken you know myself. Um, Wait a minute, you you don't just take a backhoe and just dig dig holes and holes and just it's okay. You just go out there and shoot. No, there's more involved than that. Oh, I thought anybody could do this. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you got to kind of remember. There's a lot of politics that goes into oh, this. There's a lot of oh, county involvement. Oh, a lot of safety issues. A lot of safety issues. Why? Location. You're not shooting guns, are you? <laughs> oh, you just can't do that in any neighborhood. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're not yeah. you're not dropping a live fire range in the middle of you know Naperville or something. Oh, well, I know that they've got one there, but they're trying oh, to push that thing out like yeah, crazy. I get it. I understand. Okay, so there is a little bit more of complexity to this problem. <laughs> I just hope everybody understands that, that it's an, it's not something that I can just walk into an area, buy a piece of property and, you know, throw up, you know, a multi-million dollar gun range overnight. So this does take us a little while. We've been working tirelessly at, at oh, this for over a year now. It's not like opening up an indoor gun range where you can have 20 bays sitting next to each other and there you go, <laughs> throw a couple million dollars into it and away you go. Oh, outdoors, like an actual gun range should be oh there is some complexity there i yes, understand there's yes. tons of it there yeah not to say that an indoor gun range is easy either because there's been multiple of them that just don't get up off the ground um but then there are you know like point blank and things like that they they've got that down to a science but they still don't get the pick of their you know the absolute pick of their real estate so that's what we've been dealing with um anything else products events we've gone over that membership the club uh, you're listening to the podcast. I, you know, I guess the next the next step is uh, Shot Show. If you guys, you know, want anything special that you want us to find out about or uh, look into bringing onto the range, uh, let us know. And the same thing about uh, off roading too. It has no no bearing. If you want to see something put out at the ranch, uh, like we probably got over six people interested instantaneously. Uh, about the uh, mountain bike trials course. Yeah, I mean that that's kind of fun for me because that gets you that gets me back to you know riding my mountain bike and you know lumping you know jumping off logs and stuff like that. So that's that's kind of fun. So we're cool. going to put something like that out there right away too. Going back to shot show, I know uh, we are taking a few meetings on Tuesday and Wednesday, I believe it is. Message us, email us if we've been talking. You've got my cell number. Shoot me a text. We can arrange a meeting or whatever. We'll have a beer and figure out what the uh, what we're looking like for 2020 and any kind of initial dates that we may have set aside so we can kind of figure out mm -hmm. where we're going from there. Because if there's one thing Vegas is good for, it's figuring out dates. and Well, everyone's meetings. in one spot, although right. you know there's a lot of time constraints in that. So make sure that, make sure that we know that... Uh, yeah, if you want to meet for 20, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, let's get together and let's, we can Let's talk. get it hammered out real yeah. quick. There's so. 800 bars that are right there. We can find some place or just meet me at a slot machine and we'll go from there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that's about it. You want to wrap up? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for listening, and this has been uh, a blast getting you guys all up to speed, and we're uh, we're really excited to start moving, uh, moving some dirt here quick. So... I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to another installment of Home on the Range. Remember, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Till next time, stay wild and true to your heart.